So, uh, as Louis said, I'm Daniel. Uh, I'm a, used to be a documentation writer, uh, and now I'm mostly a Modlua developer for the HTTP server project. I'm also involved in the traffic server and infrastructure. And I'm here to talk about Modlua. And if I seem a bit incomprehensible, uh, that's just how I am. Uh, sorry for that. <laughs> um, so I'll be starting out with some stuff about Lua, uh, talking about why you should use Mod Lua, how to set it up, and, and go through some examples of what you can, you, you can do using Mod Lua uh, and what I've been using Mod Lua for, uh, and some, some case studies. And, and, and lastly, I'll talk about the new and exciting stuff since we last met, if, if anyone was at the Portland conference. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing one or two of you <laughs> saw that. Um, okay, so uh, before we begin, charts have been made using Lua JIT because it's much faster than plain Lua. Um, and you can tune into the, one of those uh, websites um, to get a, a get to grips with what Mod Lua is and how it works and how to set it up. Uh, I especially recommend the, the latter one because that's my site um, and it's a bit more comprehensive uh, than the official documentation. Um, so some stuff about Lua. Uh, as you can see, it's a powerful, fast, lightweight, blah, 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 scripting language. Um, Speed-wise, it's as close as you can get to C without losing the benefits of a dy dynamic system, a dynamic script language. Um, it's used in pretty much everything from major supercomputer nodes to uh, washing machines to fridges to World of Warcraft, if you know what that is. Uh, and as you can see, it has a very simplistic syntax. Um, you don't need to be a programmer to figure out how this works. Uh, we have numbers, strings, arrays, tables, and you can iterate over them and print hello world and, and so on. Um, so it's, it's very simple to get started with if you're brand new to it. Um, it supports closures, object-oriented programming, it has an automatic garbage collector, you can use dynamic types, and I'm not going to go into meta tables, but that's some really cool stuff. It's uh, as close as you can get to overloading operators in C++, so you can define how uh, everything works in, in Lua that way. Um, and some basic regular expressions called patterns, which is about 99 times faster than regular expressions, but also has some severe limitations to it. Um, so the, the first question is how fast is this? This is a logarithmic, logarithmic scale of, uh, I think, seven different uh, functions. Um, and you can see how each of the language perform. Um, and the next slide, you can see how fast it is on a normal scale. Uh, you can see Lua is pretty fast compared to, to other dynamic uh, languages, and uh, Lua JIT is almost as fast as uh, C and C++, and actually faster than Java in, in most cases. In some cases, it won't be nearly as fast, but in most cases, it's quite fast. Um, so why would you want to use Smart Lua apart from the speed? Um, you want to use it because it allows you to extend and modify the HTTP server. You can respond to requests, much like with a PHP application or a JSP or whatever you want to use. You can change metadata on the fly, which means you can change the URI, you can change the host name, you can change the document root. Uh, pretty much everything inside the request can be changed on the fly. Uh, you can rewrite requests like mod rewrite or mod alias. You can set up custom, customized uh, authorization or, or authentication schemes. Um, uh, I know Rich talked about the require expression. Uh, with Modlua, you can make your own require function and require it. Uh, I'll show you that a bit later. And you can make quick handing, which is pretty much cheating because you skip all the other modules. Uh, which makes HTTP server very fast. I'll show you how fast in a minute. Uh, and you can uh, add some filters, much like uh, mod proxy HTML or mod deflate or whatever you want. Uh, I'll show some of that as well. Um, so in other words, you can 
write your own modules without having to either learn C or use C, because if you write a module in C, you have to recompile it, test it, restart the server, test if it works, fix a bug, recompile, restart the server, and so on and so on. With Modlua, you can just test it, find, find a bug, fix it, test it, it automatically, automatically reloads the module if uh, it has changed. You don't need to restart the server. So you can pretty fastly, pretty quickly make a, a prototype of, of the, the kind of module you want. And then you can write it in C later if, if that's what you want. Or you can just use Modlua because it's um, very fast. Um, and yeah, it's, it's sort of a substitute for Mod Perl and Mod Python because they don't exist for 2.4 yet. Uh, I know Mod Perl will at some point <laughs> be available for 2.4, but uh, uh, not yet. Um, so setting up Mod Lua is quite easy. It's a part of, it's a core part of uh, the HTTP server 2.3 and later. So if you use 2.4, it's uh, either already in your uh, distribution or you can get it uh, via your package manager. Um, you can use it with Lua or Lua JIT, uh, and it's compatible with all the, the, the modern versions of Lua. Um, and you can use it on pretty much any platform because it's written in C89, so it's very low key. It doesn't use boost or any fancy stuff that you might uh, want to think. Um, you can, as written, you can enable it during the build. <laughs> Or you can use it using this uh, apxs command, uh, which usually builds without any problem. Uh, sometimes you have to, to modify it and include uh, the, the header location and the library locations if you have two Lua versions installed on your system. But you generally don't want to have two Lua versions on your system. Um, setting it up is just this. You load a module, and uh, you set the if you want to use it for scripting, you just uh, use the ad handler and set it to, for example, you throw all Lua files to the Lua script handler. And the speed tricks I have uh, listed here are some you should generally use. I'm going to explain later what they do. Um, but you should just trust me on that and use that. Um, there are two ways of running a script. You can either use an external, uh, external script file, or you can put your code, your Lua code, directly into the HTTPD configuration. Uh, the latter one is not supported by all the, um, all the directives, but it's supported by most of the directives. But um, it's, it, it can get a bit messy, so I recommend you use an external uh, script file for that. Um, it, um, HTTP interacts with Lua via something called hooks. If you're familiar with how HTTP server works, you know it's got 80, 90, 100 different hooks that it, it runs through whenever a process uh, a request is processed. <clears throat> uh, and, and Lua can hook into each of these different uh, request phases. Um, and uh, as, as written, it, it'll look for a function called handle if you don't specify, but you can specify, uh, if I go back, uh, you can see I specified a, a, a handle called quick handler. Uh, if I didn't specify this handle, it would just look for a handle called handle. And you can see this is a very simple uh, Lua hook called handle, and it just says if OK, uh, then return Apache 2.OK, which means everything is fine. Uh, or it could return a 404, which would uh, in turn tell HTTP to send the 404 not found page to the user. Um, so uh, these are the codes that uh, are expected to be returned by um, uh, Modlua. Um, nothing special about those. Um, just to, to, to show that you can um, return some internal um, internal commands to, to uh, tell the HTTP, HTTP server how to react, or you can just return a standard HTTP command uh, status. Um, functions can be pulled. 
as with any decent module. Uh, you can put it all into one Lua file, or you can put it into several Lua files. Um, nothing spectacular about that. Um, so let's look at some business logic. Um, as I said, it can, Modlua can hook into all the different phases of the HTTP server's request. It can hook into the quick handler, which is the first, kind of like an ambulance, the first responder to any request that arises. Um, it can hook into the translate name hook, which is what mod rewrite and mod alias do, which is basically translate um, a URI to, um, to whatever it's supposed to be. Um, like if you rewrite from foo to index.php, that happens in that hook. Uh, you can hook to map to storage, which is what ca the, the caching module and the proxy module do, which is actually kind of cheating. Uh, but that's where the, the URI gets mapped onto a file path. Uh, so you can hook into that. Um, you, can, uh, you can do whatever you like and whatever, whatever hook you like, but you should do it in, in the appropriate hook or unexpected results may, may occur. So that's why I'm going through all these hooks. Uh, there's a check access user ID authorization. That's the auth CN uh, modules. They do all that. And there's a type checking, nobody uses that. Uh, <laughs> and the, the, finally, the logging phase, uh, which I will show you uh, almost towards the end. Um, let's have some examples of what you can do with Modlua. The first one is uh, randomly rewriting uh, slash random to something random. You can do this in, in Mod Rewrite as well. It's a bit more difficult to do in Mod Rewrite and a bit less transparent. So I like to use Mod Lua for stuff like that. And as you can see, it's, it's quite easy. You just check if the URI equals slash random, then you change the URI and return OK, which means I handled this, everything went smoothly. Uh, or if it doesn't equal slash uh, random, you just return something called decline, which means I did not handle that request and so all the other modules, they get a say on it instead. Uh, and another fun example we can do with Modlua is a rudimentary load balancer. Uh, this is pretty much the equivalent of what you can do with the mod uh, proxy balancer. It's not equivalent to what you can do with mod proxy balancer, but, but it, it's sort of the same. You can um, as you can see in the function, it just changes the handle to proxy server, which means mod proxy needs to handle this. And it says to proxy to uh, one of the random, uh, a random selection of one of the servers, the backends that are available. Um, so you can see that's just one, two, three, four, roughly 10 lines of code. And you have uh, a load balancer. Uh, this next one I'm just going to skip because no one knows the skip flag. Um, yeah, if I can't skip it, come on. Uh, yeah, okay, you can, you can modify what gets locked if you have a, a lock file and you don't want certain things to be locked. You can add, a, you can use the Lua lock directive. Uh, and add a function that, for example, checks if this is uh, a request coming from local host or the, the IP, if, if, if that's uh, the local host, you can redact the URI and maybe put a warning in that we're redacting this, uh, this information. Uh, so you can basically you can change cookies, the URI, the IP, you can change whatever you want before it gets locked, or you can, uh, um, and, and, and return the, the OK signal, which means it gets locked, or you can return done, which means don't do anything at all, um, which is, um, well, it's a um, vast improvement in speed when you return done. Uh, if you don't want any logging at all, you can just, uh, you can either use custom log slash f slash null, or you can implement a, a logging hook that just returns done, um, so no logging gets done at all. Um, so let's look at some access authentication and authorization. Um, much like the require expression, uh, you can require any arbitrary Lua function. 
and use that uh, to determine whether a request gets uh, a 200 OK or whether it gets a 403 denied. Um, a basic authorization handler like this one, which allows coworkers or Abe, Bob, Carl, and Dave to access a resource between 8 a.m. in the morning and 5 a.m. in the 5 p.m. Uh, sorry, I'm European. Uh, 5 p.m. Uh, as you can see, it checks if the authenticated user equals a Bob, Carl, or Dave, and the hour is less than eight or greater than 17. Sorry, 403. Uh, and if it's not, we return decline, which means we didn't handle it. Go ahead, uh, serve this URL. Um, as I said, it, it, you can make uh, require directives. Uh, so you can say require foo or whatever you want to call your own authentication uh, authorization handler. Um, it doesn't return OK or denied or done. It returns these uh, granted, denied, neutral instead, uh, which is a bit tricky to learn. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, let's go ahead with an example. Uh, if you want to use uh, DNS blacklisting, for example, uh, we'll just put this in our configuration, the, the Lua Auth Z provider. Uh, let's call it DNS BL check. Uh, and then in a, some location, we can just say require DNS VLL check, and we'll just pass the uh, domain name of a DNS blacklister uh, to this function. And let's just take a look at that function. Um, this is just an example function. It, it doesn't work, but you can see what happens. Uh, the first, the R is the request, and the provider is what we just passed here called dnsbls.someprovider.com. So that will get passed to this uh, dnsbl check function. Uh, and it pretends to look in the cache and see if it can find something. And if, if it doesn't, it queries the DNS blacklist provider. Uh, and if the result is bad, it returns denied. And if it's not bad, it returns granted. So that's hopefully e easy to understand. Um, and it, it'll take maybe 20 lines, 20, 20 more lines of code to actually implement DNS blacklisting using Modlua. Um, so let's get to the fun part, which is website scripting, which is what I uh, mostly use Modlua for these days. Um, it's pretty easy to set up. You load Modlua and you make it run, for example, dot Lua scripts. Um, you should use this files match uh, method in, uh, with the set handler. You should not use the add handler because if you use the add handler, then um, if someone uploads a file called uh, foo.lua.png, it'll still be run as a Lua file. So that would uh, allow someone, if, if you're not careful, you can uh, allow someone to run arbitrary scripts on your machine and that's not not a good idea. So use the files mat and the set, set handler always. Uh, so let's take a look at a sample script. Uh, this is what it looks like in PHP and mRuby, um, which is a, sort of a competitor to Modlua. Uh, and this is what it looks like in Modlua. First, we set the content type to text slash HTML. And we print out hello world. And again, we return Apache 2.ok, which means everything went fine. Um, so let's take a look at how fast this is compared to other scripting languages. Um, as you can see, uh, with one or five concurrent requests, it's not super fast, but that's just how the benchmark software works. So. Um, because it, 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 it can't use multiple calls when you just have one or five concurrent uh, users. But if you have 50 or 500 or uh, 15,000 concurrent users, you can see that Modlua is quite fast. It's actually faster than a, a static file uh, and quite a lot faster than ModPHP uh, and the, the Ruby version. Um, I, I took it upon myself to see how fast could I make my Lua run? How many requests per second could I do? How, how can I tweak it so that it, um, it gets as many requests as possible? And I, again, this is with the same Intel i7 uh, 4-core. 
Uh, and this is just how many requests per second I could serve with uh, the HTTP server. Um, as you can see, the, the, the blue and the orange is the standard setup, standard setup of Marlua. And the yellow is using a quick handler, which means we discard all the other modules, or as many as, them as we can, uh, which gave us about 80,000 requests per second on the server. Uh, then the all the bacons and egg you have, which is pretty much disabling all modules in uh, the HTTP server, except for Mod Lua and the, the core modules that you need to have. And that brought us up to 100,000 requests per second. Um, and the last one is the fastest possible serving at all using the HTTP server. This is using a, a module that has an NC that has a quick handler, uh, which is the first uh, hand, first hook at all that gets requested once uh, our request has been read by the server. And, and you can see that the difference is that the C module can process 120,000 requests per second, and the mod Lua can process about 105,000 requests per second. So there's um, to put it bluntly, uh, it's the fastest dynamic language for HTTPD, and there's about a 14% uh, drop in, in speed, only 14% drop in speed when you switch from writing a static C module uh, and, and, and writing a Mod Lua module instead, or a Mod Lua script. Um, I'm gonna go with some case studies, uh, two projects using Lua now. Uh, the first is our common site, which was the first, I think, first site ever to use the Mod Lua for scripting, most like uh, PHP and, and so on. Um, yeah, the first Lua-driven ASF site also, because we are we are a, a bit afraid of Lua still. I don't know why, but we are. Um, it, uh, it's used in, in our documentation. If you go to the bottom of the page on all our HTTP server documentation pages, you can see this little link called post a comment and you can see what comments are. Uh, and this is, you can see, this is what a comment looks like. Uh, this is my, me and the cow there. Um, and this is all made in Lua. Uh, it was originally, originally made in a different uh, with a different module called Mod Plua, which is uh, the, the the P is for pre-processed because it works like PHP instead. Um, but we switched to Mod Lua later, uh, and this has just been working ever since. No no known bugs or failures or successful hacking attempts um, that I know of. Uh, the second. I want to share with you is modules.apache.org, which is um, where third-party contributors can go and register their modules for the HTTP server, and we can, or users can go and look and say, hey, I, I'm, I'm looking for a mapping module or an authentication module or a database module or a filter or whatever, and they can find those modules there. Uh, and that's also written using Mod Lua. Um, yeah, the aggregator stuff doesn't really work at the moment, but uh, it, yeah. And it also uses uh, the comments that Apache.org um, and directory browsing, advanced searches, and so on and so on. But the interesting thing about the, the module side was that we uh, needed some database behind it to, to drive the site. And um, Marlua didn't, at that time, it, it didn't have any database API. So you had to use uh, Lua SQL, which uh, if anyone has used it in here knows, it's um, not the best module invented ever, uh, or library. Uh, you can't use prepare statements or anything with it. Um, so the solution was to build a database API. So I, I sort of accidentally did that. Um, and yeah, we used the, the APR DBD uh, API for this, uh, and also utilize SmartDBD, which if, if you don't know what it is, SmartDBD is uh, 
a module that maintains a pool of database connections that all other modules in the HTTP server can use. So if you have, uh, you can have 50 connections to a MySQL server and then each module can acquire a pool, acquire a, a, a connection from the pool and then use it and release it again. So you don't have uh, a billion connections at once. Uh, and you don't have to bother with setting up the, the SQL connections in each module. You can just acquire a, a connection. Uh, so in 2.4.4, we have uh, all this, um, and this is what it looks like. Um, in this example, I'm using ModDBD, um, which at, at that point was using MySQL. Um, and uh, it's pretty straightforward. I'm doing a query, and if it doesn't error out, I'm just going through each of the pairs. Uh, from the results and putting out the name or whatever. Um, you'll notice that, that, that it says row one. Uh, that's because Lua is one indexed, it's not zero indexed. Uh, so it starts with one instead of zero, um, but you'll get used to that. And uh, one thing I need to remember is always close the database because otherwise you'll end up accumulating uh, open connections until the garbage collector kicks in, which is a bad thing. Alternately, you can use uh, bro, the, the, the names of the columns. Uh, as is new in, I think it's in 2.4.9, you can use the, the row names, the column names. So you can just say row.name instead, or row.id, or row.whatever column you're interested in and, uh, instead. So that's um, an advantage. Uh, I am way ahead of time here, so it's, uh, okay, we'll have some time for questions, I guess. Uh, new stuff, since we haven't met, uh, since we last met, uh, and it's still new stuff, even if we haven't met before. Uh, we have web, WebSocket support, um, which is also, in the spirit of Lua, quite simple. Uh, you just call the WS upgrade function if it, if it returns true, then you can go on and use the WS write to write a frame uh, to the client and use WS read to read a frame from the client. Uh, this is a blocking read, so you don't want to read it unless you know that you're going to get something. Um, and then write back, you wrote this and this and this. Um, there's a new function called WS peak, which is uh, basically just checks if, if the client is, has written anything to us yet, uh, which is you, you should use that before the WS read um, so it doesn't block. Uh, but more on that tomorrow. Uh, we have input filters. This is an, an example of anti-hack, checking for uh, PHP opening tags in, in a file. Uh, and if it finds it, it replaces it with the HTML escape version of it. Um, this is a coroutine based uh, filter. So you need to know a bit about coroutines uh, to use it. But um, once you get the hang of it, hang of it it's pretty simple. Um, and you can use it to filter all sorts of input from the, uh, from the client. You can also go do it the other way around and filter the content from uh, HTTP uh, this is an example of how to recreate mod deflate in Lua. Um, it's pretty basic, I think. Um, and that's just 20 lines of code, so you, you don't need mod deflate anymore. Um, or you could, you could do whatever, you could uppercase anything that HTTP uh, puts out, or you could use it as a replacement for mod proxy HTML, where you can replace uh, the addresses in, in the HTML code with whatever you want to. Um, and it's, it's certainly very fun to, to work with. Um, okay, some, some code caching options. Uh, Lua code cache, I don't know if Brian is here today. I had a big argument with Brian. Brian didn't want this, but it's here nonetheless. Um, and I think that's a great thing. Uh, uh, Lua code cache is 
probably the one thing that, that we have that, for example, Nginx doesn't have yet, which I think is a bit uh, fun. Uh, it, it's basically a directory that tells you uh, when do you reload a Lua script. You can set it to uh, stat, which means check if the file has changed. If it hasn't changed, don't reload it. If it has changed, reload it. Uh, you can set it to always, which means uh, always. I, actually, I think that's supposed to be forever. Um, I'll, I'll fix that later. Uh, but you can set it to keep a, a, a persistent um, cache of the file no matter what. So if it changes on your disk, it doesn't reload it, which is uh, good for production servers because it's way faster. Um, I'll explain there's some caveats about that. Um, or you can set it to, to never, so it always reloads the Lua file no matter what, which is probably what you want to do on, uh, if you have your Lua script on some NFS mounted uh, drive where it's sometimes impossible to stat the file and, and see when it was the last updated. Um, I'll go back to the, the, the always in a bit. Um, then we have the Lua map handler. Uh, and you can, if, you, if you're interested in this, you, you should go check out the, the Lua at client, uh, which uses Lua map handler brilliantly. Um, it's, it's basically, you can, like mod rewrite, sort of, you can map um, um, a URI, you can extract things from it, and you can interpolate that on the, uh, the script that gets called and the handler that gets called. So in this example, Anything that goes to example.com slash flu slash abc goes into foo.lua and the, the function handle abc. Uh, so this is quite useful for non-existent files that you want to, for example, like with mod uh, wsgi, you want to throw it all through a wrapper. So you can just map all non-existing files to a, uh, a certain wrapper function that will do whatever it, it, it wants to do with uh, the, the, the file name. Um, we have regular expressions and glob or globe or whatever it's called, support. Um, as I said, this is about 90 times slower than uh, the patterns that Lua usually uses. But uh, then you get the full range of expressions that uh, you want to use. Um, and we have a whole bunch of other stuff. We have the various encoding stuff uh, we have. Uh, well, OK, we don't have SQL escaping, actually. Uh, we have HTML escaping and escaping. We don't need a SQL uh, escaping because we always use prepared statements, don't we all? Um, so that's no problem. Uh, and we can change more uh, settings on the fly now. We can do, uh, if, if some of you saw Rich's presentation, he talked about mod vhost alias. Uh, you can just do that in Lua instead and uh, change the document mode. And at some point, you will be able to change the uh, access log uh, as well. Um, I'm going to make that happen because um, that's a great idea. And uh, we have access to the scoreboard, uh, which is a big table of everything that goes on inside the HTTP server. Uh, I'm going to show an example of, uh, I don't know how many of you use the regular server status. Uh, okay, uh, this is what my server status looks like, and it's dynamic, it constantly updates. So it's a bit, I think it's a bit nicer that you get a, a graphical view of uh, how things are progressing. You can get the, all the, what each thread are doing, et cetera, also. Uh, and you can uh, see how expensive, you can get the, the most expensive URLs. So you can see which module or which uh, script is uh, using the, the most CPU time and most uh, processing time if you want to do that. Uh, it's on uh, GitHub, this uh, server status module or script. Uh, so you can just uh, go down it there. It's called server status. So just search for it. Um, Okay, some optimization techniques. Um, Lua scope is very important if you are looking for speed. Um, I'm just going to go through this quite quickly and say always use the thread option. Um, 
because that's the fastest one. Um, if, if you have enough memory, then use the thread option. If you don't have enough memory, uh, you should use the server option, which is kind of like mod DVD. It sets up a pool of Lua virtual machine states that the module can then acquire, use, and release again, uh, which is a bit cheaper. And it's, I guess it's about 5% slower than uh, the thread. Um, so if speed is all that matters, you should use the, the thread. Um, the the common one scopes, um, you, you only want to use those if you know you are leaking memory, which normally you aren't, because Lua is very great at um, garbage collecting. But <clears throat> if you have a C module that leaks memory, you might want to uh, use the con or the one scope, which always spawns a new virtual machine whenever a new request comes in. Um, that's about it for that slide. Um, yeah, the code caching options. Um, you always want to use the always on the production server, and you want to use the stat on the development server, um, unless it's uh, for Lua scripts, for, for uh, scripting like PHP or whatever, serving up pages. Uh, then it doesn't matter if you use always or if you use uh, the stat, because it's always going to stat, because that's just how HTTPD works. It will always check if a file exists before throwing it to the handler, um, which is a good thing. Um, right. Uh, using the right scopes, that should be self-explanatory. Uh, always import libraries into the global scope. We did, uh, we do have a bug actually where if uh, requirement fails, currently it will not um, output the actual error in the error log, but that will be fixed in 2.4.10. Um, so you should go and do this and get 2.4.10 when we release that. Uh, this is an example. Uh, you should require something before you do the function. Um, and then, as I said, the fun, fun, fun thing is that currently the upper uh, version will not output the correct error, whereas this one will output the correct error. Uh, but you should use this one and just write good code instead of bad code uh, without any bugs. Um, yeah, and that's actually about it. Uh, I usually go over time, but this time I'm not. Uh, any questions so far? Yeah, Jim? Um, I think uh, some, some of the directives have an early or late uh, addition you can add to the directive. Um, but um, I think, no, I think it's actually APR hook middle plus one that it runs as. Okay. Um, but we could improve on that, I guess. But. Um, yeah, that would require having a new directive telling us uh, when to, to, to add it at a handler. Um, anyone else? No? OK, some useful links. Uh, do visit my website, notlua.org. I have some more examples of how to get started uh, and a very comprehensive uh, API, which I built using XSLT, which is a pain in the ass. Oh, oh, oh. Um, yeah, that's about it. So uh, thank you for still being here. Thanks, Daniel. Okay.